Welcome to the MSUB Library homepage. This is a great place to start your research with the Power Search bar, but there are a few other items to mention on the Library homepage, including our hours. Our general hours are right here on the page. If you need more detailed hours, there is a link below where you can see more. In the lower left-hand corner, you will see our contact information. However, again, if you need more detailed contact information, you can click on Contact Us in the left-hand menu. Along the bottom, we have all the social media platforms that the library is on. This is where the library posts about events or service updates. And that is a quick overview of the library homepage. Today we are going to cover four ways to do library research online. One way to do research on the library webpage is to use the Power Search, which is kind of like a Google search of library resources. When you do a search using Power Search, you are searching many of the library's resources all at once. To start, I'm going to go ahead and put in my search term and hit enter. So the first thing you should notice is the yellow bar prompting you to sign in. There are a couple of reasons to sign in. First of all, by signing in, you will be able to access all the resources off campus without any problems. Secondly, you are able to save searches and items to view later, which I will show you how to do. So I will go ahead and sign in using my NetID and password. You can see I'm signed in, indicated up in the right-hand corner. Now let's look at the search results. I have done a quick search, which means my results include everything available. As you can see, there are over 10 million items in my results list. You can make this list shorter and more specific. First of all, I will use the drop-down menu to just search for books on my topic. As you can see, this takes me from 10 million results down to over 6,000. I may also use the Refine My Results tool on the left-hand side to specify my search further. I will choose a couple of items in this menu. First, under Subject, I will click next to Mass Media. Then I will click Apply Filters. Next, I will scroll down to Publication Date. I will move up the starting date to 2000 so that I know the books that are in my results list are focused on the social media that I'm really researching. Then I will click Refine. Again, you can see how this has shortened my results list. Looking at the first record, it is listed as an electronic book with an active link for access. When I click on this link, it takes me to the book in a new window. Once I'm in the new window, I have options to read the book online, download it, or share it. There is also a citation tool available. The third record in my list is a physical book, indicated by the book type, as well as the location on the first floor with the call number to find it on the shelf. There is also a citation tool within PowerSearch. If I click on the quotation marks in the corner, I have the citation listed below and I can switch to different citation styles. As I stated before, you can save items for later viewing. To do that, I click on the pins in the corners of the records. So I will go ahead now and pin both of the records that I just looked at. Now let's take a look at articles in PowerSearch. I will go up to the top drop-down menu, and instead of books, I will choose articles. Again, I get a very long list of results that I can specify with the Revine My Results menu. I can choose things like peer-reviewed or type of article, but again, I'm going to limit my subject. Under Subject, I'm going to click on Show More. I am interested in social media effects on students, so I will choose that and hit Apply Filters. I am still left with quite a few results because students applies to a wide age range. So I can go to the subject menu again, click show more, and choose secondary schools to be more specific. Again, I will also scroll down to publication date and move my starting publication date to 2000 
and click on Refine. Let's take a look at one of the articles. I am going to look at the fourth article. To access it, I will click on Full Text Available. The article opens in a new window. Once I am in the article, I can save the article as a PDF. I can email it to myself or print it. There is also a citation tool available where, again, I can choose the type of citation style I'm looking for. I will close this window and show you how to view saved items. Not only can you save individual items in PowerSearch, you can also save a whole search. To do this, you click on Save Query at the top of the page. This will save all the results and your filters. To view my saved items, in the top right hand corner, I will click on the pin. I can then see my two saved books and my saved search. And that is an overview of PowerSearch. If you would like to focus your research on ebooks, you can start at the library homepage in the left hand menu. In this menu, I will click on Get Books. On the new page, you see there is a list of different options for book searches. We are going to look at eBook Central. eBook Central is a great database to find eBooks on a wide variety of topics. To start, I will just type in my search term and hit enter. At the top of the page, you can see that I have over 100,000 eBooks in my results list. Along the left-hand side, you will see options to refine your search to make that list smaller and more specific. I can choose things like publication year or subject. Let's take a look at one of the eBooks. I'm going to click on the second book in the list. You have a few options once you are in the book window. You can read it online or download the book. You can also jump from chapter to chapter. I can click on Chapter 2 and it will open the book right in the viewing window for me at that chapter. You still have the chapter navigation on the left hand side as well as keyword search available. Along the top there are some tools, the download options are there, as well as highlighting and sticky notes. Let's go back to the book page. A couple more things to mention would include the Cite Book tool. You have the option to choose a different citation style using the drop-down menu. Also, if you sign in to eBook Central using your NetID and password, you are able to add items to your bookshelf to come back to later. If you would like to focus your research on articles, you can do that from the library homepage in the menu on the left-hand side. In the menu, I will click on Get Articles. Then, I will click on A to Z Database List to get the full list of databases. The library currently has 195 databases, and not all of them will cover your research topic. You can use the subject drop-down menu to find databases for a specific topic. For instance, nursing. Now I'm only seeing databases focused on nursing topics. However, for today's instruction, I will be looking at the full list of databases. The first database we will look at today is Academic Search Complete. Academic Search Complete is a good place to start your research because it is a very general database that covers a lot of topics and pulls articles from a variety of sources. I will start by putting in my search term and clicking Search. At the top, you will see the number of search results, which is over 85,000. We can use the Refine Results on the left-hand side to make our search more specific. First of all, you will see the option to limit to scholarly peer-reviewed journals. Sometimes professors will require that your research be limited to peer-reviewed journals. I will go ahead and click that option. I will also move my starting publication date up to 2000 and hit enter. 
Now I will look at subject thesaurus terms to refine my search even further. I will click on Show More, and a new window will pop up. I can scroll through the list of topics to find what I am really interested in. I can choose multiple options or just one. In this case, I think I will choose Fake News, and I will click Update. I have now refined my search from 85,000 articles down to 500, which is more manageable. Now let's look at one of the articles. The second article has a full text PDF, which I will click to access the article. I am now in the viewing window. From here, I can download the article, print it, or email it. The toolbar on the right also includes a yellow paper, which is the citation tool. Once I click on that, I can scroll through the different citation styles. To return to my list of articles, I click on Result List in the upper left-hand corner. Sometimes an article is not available in Academic Search Complete. In this case, you will see Check for MSUB Availability. For instance, the fifth article in the list. When I click on Check for MSUB Availability, our library system checks our other databases to see if it is available somewhere else. In this case, it is available in another database. What if an article is not available in any other databases? You can still get the article. When I click on Check for MSUB Availability on the third article on the list, I receive a message that no full text is available. However, you will see a link that says Request Article. This link will take you to Interlibrary Loan, a service that is completely free to students. You can choose the MSU Billing Student button to go to the login page. To log in, use MSU Billings slash NetID and your NetID password. And then hit Sign In. Once you are signed in, a request will pop up for the article that you were looking for. All you have to do is scroll down to the bottom and hit Submit Request. The ILL office will then request that article from another library and email it to you. You may also request other materials like books and DVDs. I'm going to close some windows and let's take a look at our list of databases and look at one other database. I will click on O at the top here and then Opposing Viewpoints in Context. Opposing Viewpoints in Context is a good database when your research is focused on a current topic. When the topic has been in the news or is currently being debated, you will find research material in Opposing Viewpoints. You can use the search bar to search for a topic, but today I'm going to click on Browse Issues. If a professor leaves the topic of your project up to you, sometimes it can be difficult to decide what to do your research on. The Browse Issues list is a good place to look for topic ideas. You can also use the drop-down menu to look at a particular category. Let's take a look at fake news on social media. The first thing you see on an issue page is an overview of the topic. This includes a little history and why people are talking about the issue right now. As you scroll down, you can see that there are what this database calls viewpoints. These include different sides to the issue, kind of like opinion papers. You can also see academic journal articles. These are the articles from peer-reviewed journals. I can click on a title to access it. When I am in the article, the toolbar at the top gives me the email, download, and print options. This database also offers a citation tool. Going back to the first page, there are a lot of different resources available beyond articles, including images, infographics, statistics, videos, and websites. All of these items would be great additions to a presentation on the topic. This database offers a good variety of resources in a user-friendly page. Those are just two of the many helpful and information-packed databases the library offers. Research guides are a helpful place to start your research. These guides are intended to be one-stop shops for students looking for library materials on a particular subject putting all the relevant information on one web page. Let's take a quick look. To access the research guides, click on the Research button on the library homepage. Then click on the Research Guides button. 
You can see all the different types of topics available. Let's take a look at one. I'm going to look under Education. Then I will choose the General Education Guide. On the Guide homepage, you can see the Librarian Contact for Education and the tabs across the top. The tabs give you education books, a list of education article databases, and other helpful resources. Let's go back to the Research Guide list. Even though many of the library databases offer citation tools, sometimes these tools are incorrect or you have an item without a citation. The library has citation guides to help you with this. I will look under Citation Styles and click on APA 7th Edition. You can see under How do I cite, there is a drop-down menu to choose the type of resource you are citing. I'm going to click on Journal Articles, which brings me to a page that explains how to cite different types of articles. These guides are great tools for doing your research as well as citing your sources. If you have questions about anything covered in this video or any other library resources or services, please contact the Ask Here desk via phone or email. And remember, you have access to all online library resources 24-7, 365.